Well, welcome everyone to our Thursday interview uh, with the amazing Yoss Sawyer. And today we are talking uh, about the secrets of sleep and your soul. So my name is Justin Phillips. Uh, big warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. And uh, we are very grateful to have weekly interviews with uh, Yoss Sawyer, aka the Lifestyle Medicine Man. So my wife and I, we live in beautiful Bribey Island here in Queensland, Australia. We're very passionate about empowering people with health and happiness and prosperity and sharing our extraordinary life experiences and lessons that we've learned. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you for your cooperation. Please do not record this call, not to distribute it to mass media and the social media sites, uh, etc. It is being recorded uh, and it is being uh, Facebook Live into the private group. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that private group, please contact the person that invited you to have a look at this uh, webinar. And you can uh, you can check out some of the amazing stories and, and healing testimonials that are, that are in that group. So uh, yeah, we will post the links as well to the recording for those that have been invited um, or, uh, or registered for the call. So I don't know about you, but uh, for me, um, sleep is a pretty important part of my health regime. And it's a part that I've had a lot of challenges with, to be completely honest. Um, so I'm really looking forward to hearing the wisdom of Yost. And uh, even though I've had 25 years of experience in the health and wellness industry, uh, there are still some parts of, of life that you know constantly working on to maintain balance and, and sleep is one of them. So I've got a bit of a biased interest in today's, uh, today's webinar. Yost was born in 1958 in Germany. He has a Bachelor of Health Science Acupuncture and Diploma of Oriental Massage and Certificates and Structural Balancing and so forth. And he began working as a therapist in 1991. He's a doctor, a qualified doctor of Chinese medicine and lectured in traditional Chinese medicine for 10 years. I met Yost when he was actually the supervisor of the acupuncture clinic at the Australian College of Natural Medicine, which was considered to be the best um, acupuncture and China, traditional Chinese medicine uh, college in the Southern Hemisphere. So Yost has overseen more than 55,000 patients. He really knows what he's talking about. He has a massive uh, background and passion in health and fitness. Uh, he was a competitive snow skier. Um, been, a lot, been involved with bodybuilding, triathlons, Ironman training, all that sort of stuff. But when he discovered Kung Fu and Tai Chi, he realized that fitness is only a part of the equation of health and vitality is the other. And that led to decades and decades of research into how to live well, how to use nutritional supplements and optimal diet, um, herbs and so forth, how to make yourself feel good, how to get vitality. And then he also added the 24 hour movement of Qi, the, the, the Chinese medicine body clock. And, uh, and how that works in our day-to-day -day activities in the natural cycles of, lo of life. And he developed his Qi cycle lifestyle, hence AKA the lifestyle medicine man. And he says, this is the ultimate lifestyle medicine is following the Qi cycle. So based on thousands of years of Chinese medicine and over 30 years of your academic research and practical observations from living it, uh, he's a dynamic speaker renowned um, for uh, very interesting and different perspectives. He, Yost provides the best traditional Chinese medicine perspective to life that, that, uh, that I've ever had um, in, in conversations. I just really am inspired and get a lot of insight listening to him. He's actually got quite a high med media profile. He's a regular contributor to Lifestyle and Health magazines, and he's the author of four, uh, five books and a couple of DVDs. Um, and his latest book is just awesome, Clock on the Health. Really encourage you to, to go and check that out and uh, expand your knowledge on all of this. And uh, Yoss, I see you're on the call there. Hello, good morning. How are you today? Can you hear me? Oh, you're, you're unmuted there. Let's unmute you. So you are muted. If you can unmute yourself, that'd be awesome. There you go. The hard one. I am. So I'm all done, yeah? I'm yeah, all done. <laughs> Hello, good morning. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I think today's topic is uh, is perfect. Because I don't know about, uh, you know, you're not too far away on the sunny coast, but down here at Bribey, just this last week, it's turned to like more grey weather and rain and windy, and it's kind of more like wintry, sleepy weather. So uh, we're, we're on task. So uh, looking forward to, to plugging your brain about sleep and the secrets of our soul. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big subject. What we yeah, spend a bit of our time asleep. <laughs> yeah, sleep is a bit of a luxury. Yes, it has turned into a luxury. So it's it's amazing how many people suffer from sleep problems. We yeah. do have the occasional person who seems to go to bed and then wakes up eight hours later. But it is it's a rarity. It's like the the usual situation is like keep waking up during the night, 
and then um, can't find it difficult to get back to sleep. And then like then finally get up in the morning and feel like, oh dear, feel a bit rut. And so there's a lot of things to be considered because when it comes to treating insomnia or sleep difficulties, we actually can't do that at the time when we go to bed. The treatment for insomnia starts the moment we get up because sleep is regulated by yin and yang in Chinese medicine. So we can't just say, we can't just go to bed and demand to fall asleep and say, okay, that's it. I've done my share. I'm going to bed now. It's 10, 10 o'clock and now I need to sleep. So I need to get up. But it quite the demands for this to happen aren't really in place for that. So what our mind wants and what our body wants are two different things. Our mind wants to sleep. Our body has got a totally different idea. The mind is exhausted and tired. The body doesn't want to know what sleep is. So there is a disconnection between body and mind. And that can be enormously aggravating. So the fact is that the more we start tossing and turning in bed, the more aggravated we become, the more annoyed, the more stressed we become. So we then start to envision, oh my God, I need sleep. How shall I get through the day? I won't be able to do my work tomorrow. Then you see yourself collapsing in front of your work colleagues. You, you see yourself like unable to perform the task. All the worry so, about being tired. Yeah, all the worries is coming in. And the more worries come up, the more difficult it is to fall asleep. And then it gets very aggravating. So um, obviously getting up and walking around what happens now? The body starts moving. The chi is starting to move. And you suddenly feel tired. Oh, great. I can go to bed. Then lay down in bed. Bang. Bing. Mind is up again. Overactive mind. And then the same battle starts again. So people in that situation resort to a various of methods in order to control that. And obviously one of the most popular is to drink a bottle of red wine. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to talk about sleep, sleep, sleeping tablets, but you're right. I think the red wine's far more used. <laughs> yeah, or, or drinking beer. Beer, because beer got hops and mold. So uh, beer actually uh, calms the mind and the shen, what we call it in Chinese medicine. So it will actually create that calmness of the mind. It will make, make the mind sink into the body. That's why we love alcohol, because alcohol unites mind and body. You become together. Mm. So when you drink beer, with the nutrients of hops and malts, which, which even more calm the mind, you do will fall asleep, but beer is a diuretic, and within two hours you wake up needing to go to the toilet. Mm. So yeah. that means beer is not a necessarily a good idea. To fall asleep because you need keeping to get it up to the toilet. So red wine hasn't got that pressing on the bladder um, urgency that the, the, the beer has. Still, using wine to sleep means you wake up to hangovers. So not a good, not a good idea either. Yeah. So sleeping tablets. Um, obviously, in my line of work, having dealt with a lot of addiction issues in the past. In, my, in doing my recovery uh, work. Obviously, I've seen um, a lot of abuse of sleeping tablets because sleeping tablets do work, but they only give you a certain amount of extra sleep and on what uh, a sake that obviously of what's the consequence. Yeah. So there are lots of methods to work with, but they all seem to have side effects. Yeah. So it's not quite straightforward. So when we take, um, then there's the natural solution, valerian um, um, and all, all kind of other stuff. Okay, that works to a certain degree. Still, um, it doesn't give the benefits. So when it comes to sleep, we're going to look at the fact that when we can't sleep, it's caused by an imbalance between yin and yang. Mm. The body is separated from the mind and 
the mind can't settle into the body. In Chinese medicine, it's, it's simply regulated by blood. Um, in Chinese medicine, we write blood in upper cases because blood is more than just a liquid in the body that pumps nutrients around. Blood stores energy and blood stores qi. But blood in particular stores yin. And in Chinese medicine, your blood is your basis for sleep. Blood is basically your bed. So when your blood is strong and healthy, that means um, that it has lots of yin and lots of qi in the blood. What it means is when you go to bed, your body is like a comfortable bed. Your blood is like, like a comfortable, gorgeous mattress, gorgeous, beautiful doona, absolute beautiful bed. As soon as you lay down in bed, the blood now engulfs your mind and takes your mind into the beautiful, comfortable doona feather bed. And you suddenly just, and then the blood keeps the mind in the body. And now you drift away into the other world. So the prerequisite for sleep to occur, first of all, we need to have strong, good blood. That means the blood, think of blood, is like a bed. That means if the blood is healthy, it can go to the mind, grasp, grip the mind, take the mind, and bring the mind to bed. Mm, that's really but, interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that. I've never heard that. So it's... it's when, when it comes to sleep, it's about the body, it's about blood, not about the mind. Yes, mm. and so when we lay in bed and we can't sleep, we're experiencing the mind not embedded in the body. That's what it is. The yeah. mind is not in the body. And there's a separation between the two. So in Chinese medicine, we can't deal with the situation as an acute problem, we have to look as a lifestyle. We need to build yin, we need to build blood. What happened then is, by the time it comes 10 p.m. or whenever it's time to go to bed, automatically the blood is strong and healthy. It will now take the mind and it will go to the mind and then settle the mind in the blood. And now the blood starts moving. It starts moving, circulating through the body. And it's, as the mind circulates throughout the body, that is this is the delicious feeling, the great feeling we get when we drift away into sleep. In my book, Clock On, um, I talk about this in depth, in detail, how this function works. Because in Chinese medicine, this function to fall asleep is regulated by the mystical organ function referred to as Sen Jiao, which is also sometimes translated as a triple heater. The so Sen Jiao hasn't got a Western name. It is, um, uh, it is a distribution of fluids, but the aim of that is to, to take one state into the next state. That means one state of awareness or one physiological uh, aspect into the next. So it's like a transformation from one state into the next. And San Jiao is exactly that mechanism that is involved with the process of falling asleep. So when we go to bed, we need to call upon this mystical function, San Jiao. And this is what I call in, in, in my book, Clock on to Hell, I call it it's the ferryman. It's like a boat, like a ship. And it takes your mind and it takes your mind on a boat. And then it crosses the ocean to the other side of the island, to the island of the sleep, into the other world. So the poetry that Chinese medicine uses to describe that function is exactly what sleep is. Sleep is not technical scientific. Sleep is mystical. It's the ability to drift away into other lands to drift away into other dimensions mm. and if Sen Jiao can do its work that means it will take you into the other land then you will have a nourishing sleep 
and it will keep you asleep right up till these seven hours come up and bang, you wake up, doom, that's it. You're ready for the next stage. That's awesome. Beautifully said, Joss. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, I, I totally know what you mean about that delicious feeling as you drift off. That is just ecstasy, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Drugs activate Sanjiao. Ecstasy works with Sanjiao. When people take LSD, it overactivates Sanjiao. So you're in, that, you're in that state between worlds. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. triple heat. Yeah, it's... it's yeah. I could go for, for days on that aspect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. I know, you've done so much work. Hey, talking about that, actually, and how uh, substances can affect our sleep, I've just started working with a client, and uh, she's in Northern California. She's got, she's, um, she, she says to me, she, she knows she's pretty badly addicted to cannabis. She actually owns a 10,000-acre uh, cannabis farm. And obviously, oh, their, a- rules, their, their laws are very different over there, so, you know. Uh, but yeah, but she knows that her addiction to cannabis is actually interfering with her with her life, and she's she's got a lot of a lot of uh, symptoms. But I I remember years ago someone talking to me about how um, cannabis can actually uh, interfere with our third eye and our, our concentration of uh, anya, I think it is in yogic terms, and kind of spread out our our prana all over the place. Um, how, can you talk into like what cannabis does and how that can affect people's sleep? Because it seems to be dividing. Some people can actually have a really good sleep when they, when they use cannabis and other people can have a really terrible sleep when they use cannabis. Um, you know, first of all, um, marijuana is a magnifying drug. So it will magnify a predisposition. Whatever the condition you are, it will magnify that. Oh, right. It's not like a sedative, nor is it like a stimulant. So you, you have sedative drugs, then you've got stimulating drugs. And marijuana, a psychedelic drug, it's, um, it's, it's a magnifying substance. It, that whatever, whatever the condition you are, it will magnify that. That means if you have a yang deficiency pattern, that means not enough yang in the liver, that means you're more on the timid side and shy. And um, if you smoke marijuana, it will give you paranoia. Okay. You are very concerned what others think of you, and you're very concerned that other people watch you all the time. Yeah, so got that's much, pretty common. Yeah, like very, people commonly report they get that when they smoke. Yeah, yeah, that means you've got a predisposed, uh, you've got a uh, yin yang imbalance in the liver. That means you've got a yang deficiency or a, a yin access condition because okay. marijuana magnifies that. Yeah. If you've got too much yang in the liver and you're cranky angry all the time, marijuana will calm that yang it will magnify the yin in the liver and therefore make you uh, considerate so in that moment uh, if you have that predisposition you will be able to use marijuana for sleep yes so if you do have an uh, um, uh, uh, a yin excess condition or an, in a, uh, a weakness in the yang then using marijuana it will interfere with the sanjaya with the action of the sanjaya to actually move you into sleep it will inter- will Okay, so for, for marijuana to take into sleep, you need to have a healthy yin. So you, this, is the, this is the catch side of the drug. You actually need to be, to a certain degree, healthy for the, for the, for the dope to have a, a, a pleasant experience. Yeah. If you become unhealthy, then pot doesn't work quite well. And it will magnify your deficiency pattern, excess conditions, your imbalances. Now you need either a sed- sedative drugs like opiates or a smack or stimulating drugs like a speed in order to continue the high yeah yeah so right right and, and how does that how does that work since so many people are now using cbd products for for cancer and epilepsy and things like that so no, these course, are people that are not particularly healthy and that sorry no it's a, it, it's a chi mover it moves chi and pain is stagnation yeah and um, uh, so marijuana will move chi so yeah. if you've got the attitude and the intent towards using it as a, as a pain management, it will not trigger the yin-yang imbalance in the liver and therefore will not cause paranoia. So okay. it's, it will magnify what it's need. If you have used the drug in order to get high and you've got a yin, yin-yang imbalance in the liver, it will magnify your deficiency pattern. You can't get high. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's really interesting. And that is, I guess that's probably part of the reason why some people just smoke more and more and more and more. Yeah, just, yeah, you're trying to get it's not working it. anymore. It's in China's medicine, it's medicine. So if you use it as a medicine, it will work as a medicine. 
yeah, but that's obviously it's a lot more structured use as opposed to every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you use it for other things, it will show you that you need to that that you need to look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's right. That's great. It's the great mirror. That's fantastic. Hey, what about um? There was a question in the comments, which is a great question. And how does nightmares like when in in the context of traditional Chinese medicine, what did how what can nightmares represent or, or be a function of? Okay, nightmares means uh, the body needs to, in, in Chinese medicine, the dreams belong to the body. They actually don't belong to the soul, to the spirit. So when people say, I have a vision in my dream, it's not necessarily a vision. It might be um, um, a, a, an energy particle of that's stored in the body that needs to be thrown off. In Chinese medicine, dream means um, I, I, I defract my, my computer, I de defract the body. So um, when energy gets stagnant in the body, she has got information. And information is it's exactly the same data that is in a video or in a, in, in a photo, yes? So when we fell asleep and we have stagnations, the body needs to um, uh, process those stagnations, which is regulated uh, by, by the liver and by the gallbladder. Because if, when we sleep at night time, liver and gallbladder um, uh, are in charge of the sleep process. And that means it detoxes the body. It frees the body of stagnation. So if we have collected lots of stagnations throughout the day, that's qi. Qi is information. That information now during the sleep is coming forward. And it's like 10 megabytes of a movie. And now, yeah. depending on the nature of this qi, if it's a lot of yang energy into that into that stagnation, it will be a nightmare. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's um, if it's a lot of yin in, in in there, it will be like a quicksand dream, like where you can't move, or you just like oh, you, someone is after you, and you want to run away, but you can't run away because oh, yeah. there's yin energy stuck. So that means I got a, there's a lot of yin issues in your life that needs to be looked at. So in Chinese medicine, we always look at the dream as an indication of the nature of what is the particular pathology that is dominating your body. Mm. So a, a nightmare usually has got lots of red colors, lots of bright colors, but they're usually red and black. And that means um, there's lots of yang. Okay, that means that yang most likely belongs to the liver and the kidney. If it's black, it belongs to the kidney, that it's fear. If it's red, it belongs to the liver and it's anger. So now you're gonna, okay, what is not expressed during the day? Where's the anger suppressed? Where's the anger causing fear? What can we do in order to build the organ system? Because if there is a stagnation due to fear and anger, that means what it will cause, it will cause a deficiency in the kidneys. So you're getting more and more tired during the day. Mm. And then when you're trying to fall asleep, the kidneys provide the, uh, the they mobilize the blood, but now the blood is uh, deficient because of the kidney being harmed. You can't fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah. So obviously that's another factor. So then you do may fall asleep, but then you get these vivid dreams. Mm. Mm. And but those vivid dreams resemble you um, 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 uh, your stagnation of the day or whatever. Mm. Um, dreams in China's medicine, they are very clear that dreams don't belong to the spirit because when we leave the body, we go home to a different dimension. And what, so what we, what we experiencing in dreams it's not what we experience with, when we are the spirit in the other side doing the sleep. Mm -hmm. Dream is nothing else like a, a, like a USB stick of information that needs to be uh, cleared. Purged, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I've studied sleep, that, um, that's what I discovered. In our deep REM sleep, we have these different processes, and one of them is the emotional detoxing. And what I found really interesting, so it's good to hear the TCM kind of approach to that as well, perspective of that. But what's been amazing to me, I've now had two cases when people have used the redox. One of them is one of my best friends. He's a super healthy guy, um, uh, like really, really healthy guy, really devout. And, uh, and he, when he first started using the redox, he got nightmares. 
and he really trusts me. He calls me all the time for health advice and helps. He's got a big community he takes care of. And he, he was calling me every few days going, man, the nightmares are getting worse. They're getting worse. They're getting worse. For three weeks, he persisted with nightmares every day, every night. And uh, he actually, um, he had to stop because the nightmares were waking him up. And he's, he's a farmer. He works really hard. Like he's one, one of the hardest working people I know as well. Has hundreds of staff. Amazing guy. Uh, but yeah, so he, he finished there. And, and I said to him, oh, you know, maybe you could just have a little bits. And, and, and anyway, it, he did restart after a while. And when he restarted, he didn't get any nightmares again. So something had really shifted in him. But yeah, for three weeks, every night, he had a severe nightmare. And now, um, like five years later, I've heard a similar story from another guy in Thailand and he gets nightmares when he takes redox. And I'm wondering, um, I'm thinking that's a part of this emotional release. You're saying yeah. that it's like this energy that's stuck in the body when you get to sleep, it kind of comes out. Yes, correct. Yes, because redox, it, it mobilizes the chi flow. It's um, in Chinese medicine, redox is affiliated with spleen, with the transformation and transportation because mitochondria and redox signaling it's directly affiliated to the spleen chi. But I need to stress the spleen written in upper cases, the Chinese medicine spleen, not yeah. Western medicine spleen. Yeah. And the function of the, of the Chinese spleen is to transform and transport fluids. So it's directly affiliated with the movement and the transformational process. So um, that means um, ASEA goes into the body and looks for stagnation because it, it enhances bodily functions. It enhances um, um, athletic performances. It enhances um, your, your ordinary metabolic processes. So in order for it to enhance, to make it better, and to, in order to prove it, it needs to, first of all, mobilize stagnation. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing it will do. So if you work all day and you just, depending on the state of mind, you have so if you work with a very peaceful mind all day the the likelihood to uh, put on stagnation is very low if you work with a more resisting state of mind and dislike what you do the likelihood for causing stagnation doing work is very high and obviously that causes deficiency patterns and uh, pathologies later in life such as heart disease blood pressure uh, and diabetes and things like that. So, um, so in order to free the body, so it can uh, induce a healing process, a seer targets the stagnation mm. and goes in there, frees them, and you got this coherent flow. But that means now that information that is stored in the stagnation. Yeah, because sleep is a detox process. It's it's recovery. It's detox. Mm. Organs that regulate sleep, liver, gallbladder, they are the two organs in, um, responsible for detox. Yeah. So that means it will not it will bring to the surface what needs to be discarded, and that means it will bring up nightmares in certain situations. I just realized listening to you. This always happens to me, Os. When I listen to you, things click in the place. Both of these guys, even though their experience was about five or six years apart, both of them are going, were going through extreme business pressure. One guy had like 11 farms and hundreds of staff and he was looking at bankruptcy like it was, it was bad. It was back in the GFC or not long after. And the other guy, he, he's actually in Thailand. He's, he's like lost his business and going through separation. So like that totally makes sense because both of them were, were you know, having a lot of emotional stress through the day. Um, yes. But yeah, it's, it's only when they take the redox and they start moving that chi, which is obviously a healthy thing, but they get an, un an unpleasant detox reaction through nightmares. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, of course. That's, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, that's but awesome. That's necessary. That's necessary. That's, you see, if, if you wouldn't bring the nightmares up, that means that information will be now stored in the tissue. That means which is that more dangerous. That information now will cause pathologies later in life. Yeah. Yeah, it's more dangerous. Yeah. yeah of, of course, that's, that, will, that will lead to blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And I often ex try to explain that to people, help people understand that, that when, when this negative energy, you know, like whether it's some sort of toxicity or, or, or um, stress tension, it has to come out. 
and but people see it coming yeah. out they see the detox process is the problem many people as opposed to actually what's happening it, it, that's a good thing this is what i observed, this is what I observed in my in, in my clinical experiences uh, experimentations with with redox with ASEA, it lowers blood pressure very quickly so uh, in my line of work i've seen pretty pretty impressive blood pressure rates like 250 over 170 and with with ASEA, i've seen it go down within a week very yeah, quickly. Awesome. Yeah, so wow. what happens is that uh, in order to bring the blood blood pressure down it needs to actually look at the obstructions yeah so of course that will cause a healing crisis yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Another interesting thing I noticed with people with redox, the vast majority of people, when they use it properly, after a number of months, usually by three months, about 90% of people are saying, yeah, this is, I feel like I'm sleeping deeper. Like many people report they have an improvement in sleep. But there's about 10% of people that they find that if they take it late at night, it keeps them up. So I'm wondering how that works as far as this, this separation of mind and body um, is the problem when we can't get to sleep. What do you think could be happening there where it seems to stimulate some people? What I find is after months of using it, then they can go they, and if they take their last dose back to kind of mid afternoon, it's okay. Like two o'clock, three o'clock, it's okay. And then after a few months, they can go back to taking it late at night, then they're all right. But initially, in their, when they first start using it, there's about 10% of people or maybe less that have a challenge going to sleep with it. Yeah, what that's that, that that can only happen if blood is deficient. So ASEA is movement. It stimulates the movement. It 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 makes thing. It makes chi move the chi mover. Yeah. So it hasn't got a, 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 an obvious biological function as such that you can look at it as you would, for example, um, could analyze with uh, such something like a if you take uh, valerian or anything like that. So ASEA is a pure chi mover, yeah? So um, if blood is deficient, then ASEA will, have, will cause an aggravation of that situation first. It brings it forward, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is why I always talk to everyone, look, ASEA, you want to work with Chinese medicine and ASEA, not just ASEA by itself. Yeah, totally agree. And that's, that's what I'm thinking, like, you know, for the, for the blood pressure issue you were saying before, I'm guessing that in that you used herbs as well as like you identified where the imbalance was and ASEA was a part of the holistic change that really helped uh, that person come back into balance. Yeah, first of all, when it comes down to sleep, um, uh, first of all, you need strong blood. ASEA can cause a situation where the blood gets clearer. Of course, it will do that. Um, but if you do have a yin yang imbalance, it needs the Chinese herbs. And the Chinese herbs will now create the yin in the blood that is essential for the deep sleep state. So, so this is where the, the Chinese herbal formulas are essential. Um, because I, I deal with insomnia in, this, in my line of work all the time, everyone will stop struggling. When I, when I ran my rehabs, every client had insomnia. All oh, right. Every client, every, except a few. Um, ICE users will, or the meth uh, users will, for four days, slept straight. And because they came off, that's like the, uh, the down regulation as part of the hyperstimulation. Yep. But then after the four days, they can't sleep. Yeah. So, um, so insomnia was one of, the, one of the main symptoms we had to treat. Okay. So I have like tens of thousands of case studies with insomnia and I've never seen it not work. I've treated every insomnia situation uh, and, and they all work and Chinese herbs are the key element. Yeah. Um, so the fact, as I said in the start, if your blood is healthy, you have the bed for the mind to be taken into sleep. If, if your blood is deficient, um, you go to bed, it feels like you're sitting on, on a, it's like lying on a bad uh, cockroach infested mattress. You can't get comfortable. Yeah. If your blood is deficient, that means you just can't get comfortable. You toss and turn, toss and turn, toss and turn. Mm. It's, it's heat in the blood. It can be um, all kinds of other factors. Mm. The aim is to regulate that first, because once we start regulating it, you will, it, it turns into a comfortable, gorgeous bed. And automatically, the blood will take the mind and will now tuck the mind into, into, into a lovely bed.
and you just cushy bed and you cuddle up, you snuggle up and you just boom, you drift away. <laughs> That's strong blood. Yeah? yeah, cool. So if blood is deficient, it's there's no snuggling up, there's no cuddling. There is just it's just a it's a it's a, it's a mattress on a dump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Um, we had some more questions in the, in the chat box, and I just wanted to apologize to yeah. everyone. I don't know what was happening with the IT today. Uh, we did have a lot of people actually having troubles getting on today. Um, so our apologies, just the internet's a bit bit weird and wacky at this, uh, this time. But um, if you do have your questions, by all means, please put them in the chat box. And at the end of the, the uh, call today, I'll also put, well, I'll put it in now. Uh, if you do want to connect with Yost, um, there's his websites there and um, you know his books and resources. He's got some free resources. Uh, like his exercise program on his website has been really helpful. I've been implementing those. And uh, I actually went and saw you recently, Yost, and uh, I was having some sleeping challenges. And I definitely noticed when the combination with the herbs um, and, and the, just the more awareness about the chi cycle um, and obviously on the, on the ASEA, the redox, I definitely had an improvement. I actually went off them for a, a day um, and two days and just to go, oh yeah, how much of these herbs were um, making a difference? And I was worse off. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, back on them today. But yeah, I had two days. I was like, oh, I'll just try without it. And yeah, it, I definitely noticed um, not feeling as calm and not feeling as uh, regulated with sleep and things like that. So, I have treated so many insomnia cases. I have treated people who took like five, six sleeping tablets plus Xanax, plus all of other medications and only have three, four hours sleep. Then I give them the beautiful peyote formula. Yeah. And within one day, they're getting seven hours sleep. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Yeah. That, that's a natural substance is more powerful than a sleeping tablet. Yeah. Yes? Oh, well, and, yeah. But the, the good thing about Chinese herbs is it's not to treat your symptom as such. It's about building blood. So, for example, if you take peony every day, what happens is it will build your blood and your blood will get stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm. So after a while you reach a certain level, if you then stop, you won't notice the difference. Yes, mm. but if you, in the beginning stage, your, your, your yin level is here, your blood level is about this level. If you take um, peony, it immediately makes you sleep. What when you stop, you can't sleep. So as you keep taking the peony, it will build the foundation of the yin. Eventually you reach this level, then that level, then that level. So as you reach this level here, you only need just a little bit, maybe half a scoop to maintain it there. Mm -hmm. if, then if you stop it for a few days, it will drop slowly, but you can sleep. Yes? Okay, yeah. So it will build it and build it and build it. But then you get this enormous experience an understanding of how yin and yang work in your blood. You understand about life from the body perspective. As yep. a result of that is you will be more proactive in dealing with imbalances. Mm. Yep. So the more you take herbs, the more you understand about yin and yang, the more you understand from the body. You see, in Chinese medicine, we say health is mystical. We don't understand health. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many degrees you have and how much how many years you spend at university, you will not understand health. You will get some understanding, but that understanding is very, very little. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so there's so many, there's so much going on in terms of health that is simply out of our reach. It's out of the reach of the mind. We cannot comprehend health by the conscious mind. It's far beyond. Mm. And the body is like an incredible creation that we will not comprehend. Mm. Unless we start aligning with the body and let the body guide us. Yeah. You see, that's what we call the Tao, T-A-L. So we, in Chinese medicine, when we take herbs, we learn about this enormous intelligence that creates the body because it will teach us. So the, the more herbs you take, the more your understanding develops. So it's therefore in Chinese medicine, Chinese herbs, are more important than food. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more important. It's just. Yeah, I, get that. I, this, yeah. I have this debate all the time with these clients. Ah, oh, you should you shouldn't use sub, uh, herbs all the time. You, you should work on your mind. 
Yeah, in Chinese medicine, it's the opposite. The mind is a substance that depends on blood, and the and blood depends on herbs. Yeah, that's so interesting because, like, I like as, as you know, and many people on the call know. And I went snow skiing in Japan. I come back, I got really sick. I uh, like kind of pneumonia, kind of level of, of chest infection. Yeah. And, and no, I don't think. It, well, the tests were saying it was negative to COVID, so I don't know if it was COVID or not. Um, but uh, but yeah, I was really crook. And then I actually had uh, one test, and it showed that I was iron deficient. I was so my blood was down. And I'm never iron deficient. Like that's a pretty rare thing for me. And then I had these sleep challenges. Come and saw you. Got on the peony. Sleep got better. Didn't take the peony for for one day. Bang, sleep not as good. And you were saying before how the, it's the separation between the mind and the body that you got to have that really healthy blood in order to go to sleep. And getting yeah. to sleep was has always been kind of my challenge more in the past. But waking up through the night is not generally my issue. A lot of people do wake up through the night. Um, I've actually woken up a few times during this period. I, I woke up at like 3.30 last night. That's kind of a really weird thing for me to do. Um, but yeah, but I know something's shifting, something's changing with my sleep. A lot of clients in, in, uh, that I've worked with over the years, they've talked about waking up in the middle of the night between that one and three, which is the liver time. And there's been a few comments about that. And can we, can we talk into a little bit about yeah. why people would wake up at that time and what yeah, they could potentially up. do about it? Yeah, waking up is, is an indication of a lifestyle issue. So if you keep waking up in the middle of the night, what it means is there's not enough sinking in during the day. It just go, 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 go. And then comes bedtime. Okay, now I go to sleep. I got seven and a half minutes to fall asleep and I need to sleep in seven minutes. <laughs> so that is the, the state of the mind that is unconsciously um, dedicated, uh, directing success, yes? Yep. Yeah. So we're achieving, we got like goals set, yeah? And so if we go, go, go all day, we, we, we are moved by goals. Mm. So that means the more goals we have in the head, the more we put the yang up in the liver, the yang goes up in the liver. Yeah. The yin is about not having a goal. Yin is mindfulness, yin is not moving towards anything. Yin is about just sitting there and being quite happy, regardless of the outcome. Yin is being stoned. <laughs> <laughs> it's chilling, eh? <laughs> happy regardless of outcome. So that means yin is a quality that gives you reward regardless of outcome. Yang is the quality that gives you reward in context to the outcome. Okay. Of course, yin and yang need to work together. You can't yep. just be in yin all day, then nothing will happen. Yes? Yep. Yep. The, the universe would collapse. Um, so yang means we're moving towards. That makes the universe move. Yeah. But if it keeps moving all the time and we don't nurture the yin during the day, we're getting this. Yep. And the yin is responsible for keeping you asleep. So if you have yin and yang in this imbalance, you will keep waking up throughout the night. Yeah. If it's like this, you will sleep seven hours without waking up. Seven and a half hours, eight hours, bang, you ping up, that's it. If it's okay. like this, you've got chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. you got fatigue, that means you, you, 12 hours sleep is not enough. 14 hours sleep, tired all the time. Oh, mm. TLT, tired all the time. It's now a pathology. So, if yin and yang are in perfect harmony, you will wake up exactly after the time that the body requires, which is around seven hours. So say it comes 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you go to bed, bang, you suddenly wake up 4.30, boom, boom, and you wake up and you go into the day. Mm. So if it's like this, you need 10 hours sleep. If it's like this, you keep waking up. Yeah. And we live so, in a society that's yeah. generally very yang orientated, right? In Chinese medicine, as soon as it gets more than seven and a half hours, it gets too much. Okay. Yeah. Like you want to cut off after about seven, seven hours and 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. If it goes into the eight hours, it gets critical. You're getting too much yin. And now you're feeling tired next day. So if you need 10 hours sleep, it's because of this. Okay. Yeah. Or the body is totally exhausted and you gave too much yang and now the body needs to rebuild itself. So anything more than 
seven and a half hours leads, it's an indication of imbalance. Japanese would even go that far and say anything more than seven hours is too much. Okay. Yeah, this is, this, yeah. This is very, like too much sleep is the same problem as not enough sleep. Not enough sleep means yin and yang imbalance, too much heating syndrome, depression, anxiety disorders. So what happens is if you keep waking up during the night, what happens is that um, you need to set up set points throughout the day that bring the yin in. For example, if you go, 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 now you need to bring in the yin. And then, so you, you bring it back into the into starting point and then you go, 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 go. And then you bring the yin up. Mm. Again, next. So you, you keep packing, mm. yeah? So you keep yeah. packing, so you never go, boom. If, you, if it goes like this all day, the sleep will be disrupted, will be a bad quality sleep. Yeah. For example, um, the best way to treat insomnia is during lunchtime. Lunchtime is the most important point in order to induce this yin aspect because around one o'clock, the yang phase that started in the morning around 3 a.m., the yang starts and peaks in, at midnight, midday, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, it peaks. Now it goes into the yin phase. Yep. So one o'clock is the most sacred point in order to initiate yin phase. So if you keep waking up in the middle of the night, that means you need to look at how you need to look at the skill of develop, developing lunchtime, lunchtime skills. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So what happens at lunchtime, how you operate at lunchtime will determine how you bring the yin in. So if you're doing, it's one o'clock and you have a salad sandwich and uh, you keep working, you're active and you, 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 you muck around with other people because you just don't want to sacrifice that moment you've got, the momentum. Mm -hmm. Going and you got a sandwich and you meet other people hey, going in the farm. Now you're missing the yin phase. For all successful people, all, all the happiest people and the fittest people I've ever trained on that, um, lunchtime is the most sacred time of the day. Okay. And I have studied under the masters who ran big, big businesses. They had like lots of staff. But when it comes one o'clock, everything shuts off. Wow. I, I knew from the cheese cycle, you know, the perfect day plan, the, the, the second last book you put out, that changed my life because I started to arrive at breakfast and I started to switch off at um, 5 to 7 p.m. as well. I consciously brought yin into my life at those two times of the day. And that helped me dramatically. But I've skipped the lunch thing and the lunch one. So that's the judge, the small intestine. You yes. Know, so yeah, that's a yeah. really interesting thing. That that's the most important time to be consciously yeah. bringing yin into your life. If you get lunchtime in order, you will have a nourishing sleep. You will keep sleeping all, all throughout the night. It's look. I've worked with tens of thousands of people. I've never seen it not work. Okay. And um, so it's just because we are subject to yin and yang, we can't make up our own rules. We have to follow the way of nature. We mm -hmm. can't follow the way of the mind. Yeah, <laughs> as frustrating as that can be sometimes. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> you, you can't follow the, the, the path of some success strategies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so at one o'clock, we need to sit down and this is hard. We need to develop the skills. Yeah. Course, everyone's got the same problem. Like I work very hard. By, by the time it comes 1.30, I force myself to get into the skill of cooking a big lunch. Of course, okay. I want to get I want to get Vicky's nibble, keep going. Because I love Yang. I'm a Yang man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. And so I have to really force now 130, that's it. I go on to get my pot out, I put rice on the stove, I, I, I cut my meat, I cut my vegetables, I put music up, uh, or a podcast, and I completely switch off from what happened till then yeah no more well nothing it, it's irrelevant because if i don't switch over into yin phase i will become sick eventually yeah that's awesome and then i need, then i then i then i can't work so then when we eat 
The idea is to sink in and transcend into yourself so you don't talk business. Businesses' lunches are the biggest cause for blood pressure problems, um, cardiovascular diseases, and, and all kinds of other problems. Yeah. Have the meeting before lunch, have the meeting after lunch, ideally before lunch, and mm. then tell everyone, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, no more business now. It's social time, relax time. And but then when you finish eating, just sit there for 20 minutes and let the energy sink right into your body, into your feet, like almost like drip, drifting off into sleep state, like, oh, let it go, let it sink, let it sink, acknowledge the yin. It, it's almost like you're falling asleep for a moment. Mm. And it's like a power nap and you just sit back and you just like let it, or maybe half an hour, but not longer. And then right. suddenly, bing, you just, you feel it's ready. And then yeah. bang, you're ready for three o'clock and you won't get 3.30 ITIS. You won't crash at 3.30. Yeah. I remember 100%. walking, I remember Nicole and I walking around um, in Sicily and we're in this, this old ancient walled stone town and cobblestone place. And it was busy as in the morning and come lunchtime, it got deserted and it freaked us out. Like all, everything was shut. The shops were yeah. shut, everything was shut. And there were a few gypsies and stuff around in the streets and there were no one else. <laughs> like We were like, whoa. <laughs> and that's the, the siesta culture they have. Have their lunch, chill out. Then they go back to work and they, they actually stay open later at night. Yeah, it's very, very dark. That means um, the yin is established. Then you go back to work and you work on whatever needs to be done. And then comes 5.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock, switch off practice, dinner, and um, chill out, glass of red wine, some herbs. When it comes 9 o'clock, 9.30, Sen Jiao is now well equipped. The, the boat is waiting to take you on, into the enchanted land. Mm. The boat is waiting. But if you don't follow the path of yin and yang, the ferryman, the boat is not waiting for you. I hear you. That's beautiful. So you exhausted and you fell asleep, but the, you, you missed the boat. Yeah, not good. Not good. Hey, uh, we had a couple of questions about what happens if you've had like part of your liver or your gall, gallbladder removed. It's so common now. Uh, you, you also talk about the general in 1 to 3 a.m. in the morning. And I know when I studied, you know, the basics of TCM, uh, the gallbladder was called the general. So, yes. yeah, what happens? Um, how can you still maintain your gallbladder energy and your liver energy, even if you've had physical organs removed? That question comes up all the time. Chinese organs are energetic in their nature. They're not physical. You can't remove the Chinese organ. You can't, you can't remove the Chinese gallbladder. You can't remove the Chinese liver. It's an energy field. It's the, the organs are property of the spirit, of the soul. They belong to the soul. When we incarnate into the physical form, the organs come with us. Mm -hmm. And now the organs now create the blueprint for the physical organs to be built. So the energetic field is the blueprint for the physical organ to, to build itself on. It's like a, like a plan, like a map. Mm. And there, but the true function is in the energy organ, not in the physical organ. If you remove the physical organ, is the energy organ is still active as before. Mm. When, um, when, we when we do acupuncture, we treat, we treat the energy liver, energy gallbladder. Yeah. Mm. So it's irrelevant if the, if the organ is removed, you still have the same function. Yeah, you just got to work on those, those meridians, yeah. those energy channels. Yeah, it is like mm. if the spleen is removed, what will happen is um, um, you work on the, on, the, on the energy spleen and it will do what the physical spleen will do. Yes, yeah. because the energy spleen is the true organ. The energy gallbladder is the true organ. The, we treat that and that's why we take lots of herbs and that's why we follow the path of yin and yang because if you follow the path of yin and yang by getting ready in the mornings, switch over at lunchtime, switch off at dinner, we nurture the energy organ. Yeah. That's awesome, Yost. Thank you so much again for your incredible wisdom. I've learned a really big tip for my health regime, and that's like get my lunch routine sorted. That's gonna that's gonna really help my uh, going to sleep. So 
super grateful for your incredible wisdom again. Really encourage people to, to jump onto your websites and get some of those resources, uh, particularly that one. It's a genius of a book. Um, still getting through it. I, I just got to keep reading it and just get that into my brain. I love it. Um, and also, they, if people can buy herbs, like they can come see you, do consults, and they can uh, get herbs from your websites and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah cool. Yeah, I've got, I've got heaps of herbs. Yeah. I've got lots of. Stash. <laughs> Fantastic. Man, you got a good stash. Yeah, the stash of the good stuff. <laughs> the good stuff. I got yeah. plenty of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love your balanced approach to life. You asked you, you know, you really are inspiring. You, you're obviously living a great life. Uh, it's quite, quite amazing. So thank you everyone for joining us again this week. And uh, we'll be back again next week, I believe. And we'll, we'll talk about another exciting topic. Stay tuned to, uh, to check out the links for that. And uh, you're, of course, you're welcome to invite anyone to come along to these talks and learn. And uh, if you're interested in uh, getting any of the products um, that we've talked about, uh, if it's about the Redox products, then please go back to the person that uh, invited you onto the call. Um, and uh, by all means, go onto uh, Yoss websites and, and check out some of his resources and books and all the good stuff he's got to share as well. Thank you, Yoss. You have a wonderful week. Great to see you again, mate. Okay. Thank you. See you then. Okay. See bye. Stay well. Bye-bye.